Well, welcome. In previous videos, we've been talking about a certain kind of transformation called a translation, where we were taking a graph and sliding it left, right, up, or down. Uh, and again, that was a kind of transformation called a translation. Now, today we're going to be looking at another type of transformation, and this time it's going to be what we call a scale change. Uh, so here we talk a little bit about it. It says, in general, a scale change centered at the origin, so that means if it's uh, centered at the coordinate 0, 0, with the horizontal scale factor where a is not going to equal 0, and the vertical scale factor it can be any number as long as b is not equal 0. So our factors that we're going to multiply our x's and y by, by what they're saying there is not going to be 0. Because if you multiply it by 0, that uh, part of the coordinate would be gone. So we want to make sure that the values for a and b aren't going to be 0, is essentially what that's saying. And if that's the case, if we have a value a that is affecting our graph horizontally and a value b that's affecting our graph vertically, we write that as a scale change as being a times x and b times y. So the way that we reference this is what we have here in the middle, which is saying that if I have a scale change, we use a capital letter S as opposed to a capital letter T for a translation. So if we have a scale change, that means that each x and y are going to be mapped onto the point of a times x and b times y. So this would be the rule for our translation. We could also write it using function notation. That's what we see here um, on the right, where we would have a scale change of x and y would equal uh, a times x and b times y. Now we could have uh, these scale changes. We could have uh, horizontal and vertical sc scale changes, meaning that if we have a situation where a is 1, if a is 1, that means, well, 1 times x means it's going to stay the same. So in other words, horizontally, the graph would stay the same. But if we have a value for b that's not equal to 1, so let's say if we have a value for b that's 3, that means that the graph is going to be stretched uh, vertically that many, or that many times greater. And if I have a b that's equal to 1, and a that's a number that's not equal to 1, so and also not 0, um, that would mean that I would have a horizontal stretch, or a horizontal uh, change there. Meaning that the graph would stretch horizontally by whatever we're multiplying x by. And now, we, previously, when we were talking about translations, we had the graph translation theorem. Remember we had that h and the k, or if we had, uh, if our rule for our translation was x plus h and y plus k, that meant that in our equation, if I wanted to figure out what our equation would be for that, where we would apply that rule for the translation, we would take and replace x with x minus h, replace y with y minus k. Hopefully you recall that. Well, we also have a graph scale change theorem which we're going to look at now. And you're going to see there's a similar concept with the graph scale change theorem that we had with the graph translation theorem. So let's take a second now to look at, to look at that. OK, so here we have this graph scale change theorem in the box. And like I said previously, if we replace x minus h, or replace x with x minus h and y with y minus k, when we had the graph translation theorem, this time, we're going to take x divided by a, replace x with x divided by a, and replace y with y divided by b in our equation. So you can see that in the graph translation theorem, we took the opposite of what was happening with the x and the opposite of what was happening with the, with the y and plugging that in your equation, or vice versa. And here, we're doing just the, the opposite again. We're going to take, instead of a times x and b times y, which we have in our scale change, um, here we're going to have x divided by a and y divided by b. So let's see how we can uh, use this. Let's look at a couple of examples now. In this first example, it says the relation described by x squared plus y squared equals 25 is graphed at the right. That's the equation for a circle. Find images of points a through f on the graph under a scale change of 2 times x and the y stays the same. So essentially, here's what we're going to do. We're going to look at um, each of these coordinates. There's a total of five coordinates here. And let's start out with the first one. And we're going to apply this scale change to that coordinate. So instead of so each of these x's are going to be multiplied by 2, and the y stays the same. Well, that means that our new location for our a is going to be at the coordinate 
10, 0. And if you notice, I have this apostrophe next to the A that's referred to as A prime. That just refers to our new location. So our new location for A would be at the coordinate 10, 0. And now let's do this for the other coordinates. So B, which is currently at 4, 3, its new location would be at the coordinate 8, 3. C, which is currently at the coordinate 3, 4, is going to be now at the coordinate 6, 4. So notice I'm just multiplying the x value by 2, and the y value stays the same. So let's do the last two. So the coordinate D, which is currently at the coordinate 0, 5. Well, when you multiply 2 times 0, that's still 0, and the y stays the same. And E, which is currently at the point negative 3, 4, that's going to be mapped onto the point oops, negative 6, 4. And it said A through F, but I don't see an F here. We just have A through E. So now we're going to graph each of these points. So A prime is going to be at the point 10, 0. B prime is going to be at the point 8, 3. So this would be 6, 7, 8 would be here. 8, 3 would be here. And then we would have C prime, which is at the point 6, 4. And then we'll have D prime at the point 0, 5, which is the same as what we had before. And then we would have E prime, which is at the point negative 6, positive 4. And if you were to graph this out, we would end up, oops, we would end up with an equation looking something like that. So we graph the image on the same axis, and we want to write an equation now for the image of this new relation. So remember, our graph scale change theorem tells us that we're going to replace x in our equation. So our equation originally was x squared plus y squared equals 25, where we're going to replace x with x divided by our value for a. Well, a was 2, so now this is going to be x divided by 2, that quantity squared. And the y, remember, there's nothing that happened with the y, so the y stays the same, and it equals still 25. So that would be the equation for the that oval that's uh, graphed in purple. Let's look at another example. It says, without using your graphing calculator, describe the transformation that maps this graph of the y equals absolute value of x onto the graph of y divided by 4 equals the absolute value of 6x. So we're going to come up with a rule for this uh, transformation. So this is going to be a scale change. And so what I want to do, remember, is I now I'm going backwards. Now I'm taking going from the equation to coming up with our actual scale change. And so in this scenario, you're going to take the opposite of what happens to the x just like we did before. So here we're taking 6 times x, so I would write this as x divided by 6. Or a better way to write that would be to say it's 1 sixth x. And for the y value, we're going to take the opposite of what happens to the y. So y divided by 4 is now going to be 4 times y. So this would be your scale change. If they ask you, no, they didn't do that for this problem, but if they ask you to apply that rule to a certain coordinate, like let's say if we had to apply that rule to the coordinate 6, 6, we wanted to figure out where the new location would be. Well, what I would do is I would take 1 sixth of 6 and take 4 times 6, and that gives me, well, 1 sixth of 6 is just 1, 4 times 6 is 24, so that new coordinate, the coordinate, 6, 6 would be mapped onto the new coordinate of 1, 24. Let's look at another example. So here it says a graph and a table for y equals f of x are given at the right. We want to graph a, draw a graph of y divided by 3 equals f of 2x. Well, before I can create a graph, I need to first figure out, well, what is my rule for my scale change? So that's going to be the first thing I look for. 
So we want to figure out where is each point going to be mapped to. How can we figure that out? Well, looking at this equation, I'm going to take the opposite of what's happening to the x here. So this is 2 times x. So the opposite of that would be taking x divided by 2, which we're going to write as 1 half x. If you did it as x divided by 2, that would be fine as well. But this is a better way to write it. And then we take the opposite of what happens to the y. Here we have y divided by 3. So the opposite of that would be 3 times y. So that means each of these values for x, and I'm going to use kind of these key points here. Each of those coordinates, the x value is going to be half the size, and the y value is going to be three times the size. So for example, a would be the currently the coordinate, negative 6, positive 2. b would currently be the coordinate, negative 3, negative 1. C would currently be the coordinate, 0, negative 1. D would currently be at the point where x is 2, y is 3. And E would currently be at the point where x is 6, y is 0. Now I want you guys to actually do this mapping yourself. So I want you guys to figure out what A prime would be, what b prime would be, and so on. So I want you to figure out what the new coordinates would be for each of these. And then go ahead and graph those. So why don't you pause the video and hit play when you're ready to check to see if you have the correct graph. Okay, so let's see how you did. You should have gotten these new coordinates. So a prime would be at negative 3, 6. b prime would be at negative 1 and a half, negative 3, and so on. Now notice how when I graph this, I label my points as a prime, b prime, c prime, d prime, e prime. I want you to make sure you're doing the same thing. So then that way on a quiz or a test, I can uh, verify to see where your new coordinates are at. So make sure you label your points just like uh, we did in this example. Let's look at another example. This will be the last one we look at. So here it says the line... 41x minus 29y equals 700 contains the points 39, 31, and 10, negative 10. Use this information to obtain two points on the line with the equation 20.5 and negative or 20.5x minus 87y equals 700. Well, the first thing that I might realize is that if I were to take half of 41, I would end up with 20.5. And if I were to take half I'm sorry, not half. If I were to take negative 29 times 3, I would get negative 87. So if I were to apply that to our equation, we end up with 20.5x minus 87y equals 700. So how does that help us? Well, we can use that to figure out uh, what is our rule for this translation. So here we were taking 41 divided by 2 times x. So if I, for my rule for my translation, I'm sorry, rule for my scale change, I would take the opposite so instead of dividing by 2, my scale change would be multiplying each value of x by 2. And then negative 3 times 29 gave us negative 87. So what that means for my scale change is I would take the opposite of that. So I would divide by 3 or take 1 third times y. And that would be my, so this would be my scale change. So now I can take this coordinate, 39, 31, and apply that scale change. Oops. So I'm going to take 2 times 39. Well, 2 times 39 is 78. And if I take 1 third of 31, it doesn't work out too nicely, so just leave that as a fraction of 31 thirds. Same thing with my other coordinate, 10, negative 10. To figure out where that point would be on my new equation, I'm going to put, take 2 times my x. Well, 2 times 10 is 20. And 1 third times negative 10 would be negative 10 thirds. And you could always check this because if I were to put this coordinate, 78, 
and 31 thirds in here for x and y, I should get 700. So let's go ahead and try that. If I take 20.5 times 78 minus 87 times 31 thirds, I want to see, do I get 700? So looking at your calculator, we'll type this in. So 20.5 times our x value, 78, minus 87 times our y value, which is 31 thirds. Hit enter, and we get exactly 700. I could try this again with my other coordinate. I'm just going to change the 78 now to a 20. I'm going to change this uh, 31 to be negative 10 thirds. So change this to be negative 10. And hit enter. And I get 700 as well. So that verifies that this uh, equation that we came up with was the correct equation. So we know that we've done everything correctly. So that's always an important little uh, tool that you can use to be able to check your answer. So hopefully you have a better understanding now of how to apply a, and how to use the scale change theorem. So with that, good luck now as you work on your assignment.